Hello. In the last video, we discussed about the service broker architecture on OpenShift. In this video, we'll focus on one of the service brokers that OpenShift provides, which is Ansible Service Broker. Like any other service broker, Ansible Service Broker is an implementation of Open Service Broker API. When you install an OpenShift cluster, you can also install Ansible Service Broker along with it, or you can run the playbook separately to install the Ansible Service Broker. Ansible Service Broker comes up in a project named OpenShift Ansible Service Broker. And in this project, you can see two pods running. One of them is the service broker itself, and the other one is a backend data store, which is, again, an HCD data store that stores all the service broker configuration related information. Ansible Service Broker manages Ansible Playbook bundles. These are those service classes that a service broker manages. These Ansible Playbook bundles, shortly called APBs, have Ansible playbooks that are used to provision services or deprovision services or bind or unbind services. So the flexibility comes from Ansible. You can script it in your own way. You can create your own APBs to do whatever services you want to provision, whether those services run on OpenShift or outside OpenShift. So this APB is a short-lived container that orchestrates the deployment of a service. The APB itself is created as a container image when you instantiate this container, this container would contain Ansible runtime. It comes up as a pod and runs and it does the provisioning and deprovisioning. In order to create an APB itself, like if you are trying to set up your own APB for spinning up your own service on a service board or of your choice, how do I do that? You have a tool called APB tool. Using that APB tool, you will run an APB in it, which gives you a structure to create this APB bundle. This structure includes a Docker file that points to an APB base image, and that includes Ansible runtime. And it also includes playbooks for provisioning, deprovisioning, binding, and unbinding. The scripts would initially have boilerplate text, but you can change them to whatever you want. If you refer to my first video on this topic, I provisioned a service called My MySQL, and I bound that service to an application. That's an Ansible playbook bundle. Let's look at the structure of that. This is the Docker file. The Docker file points to an APB base image and it is copying the playbooks and it is copying a set of roles. And these actions are called when the actual provisioning or deprovisioning needs to happen. Let's look at the playbooks. The provision playbook is pointing to a role called provision MySQL. The role includes spinning up a Kubernetes service for a MySQL database, attaching a persistent volume, and creating a deployment configuration for a MySQL database that is based on this image pulled from Red Hat's registry. Now let's look at a deprovision playbook. This deprovision playbook, just like the provision playbook, is pointing to a role, deprovision MySQL, and the deprovision role is removing the service, the MySQL service, and the backend persistent. So that is how I customized the default boilerplate provisioning and deprovisioning scripts to spin up a MySQL service. In your case, imagine yourself as an APB developer using APB in a tool to create this template and then edit those provisioning and deprovisioning roles to a script of your choice. Since your APB bundle includes a Docker file, you'll run an APB build that in turn actually runs a Docker build to create an APB container image. That APB container image is pushed into a container registry and it forms the service class for your Ansible service broker to manage. So how does your Ansible service broker know where these APBs are? The service broker runs as a part and it refers to a config map called broker configuration. Let's look at it. I'm logged on to OpenShift console as an administrator and I'm in this OpenShift Ansible service broker project. Here is the Ansible service broker par and here is the HCD. Let's look at the resources and the config maps. Here is the broker config. If you look at the configuration here, the broker config is referring to two different registries. One is Red Hat's registry at registry.access.redhat.com. The other one is a local OpenShift registry. And this local registry is pointing to two different namespaces. One is OpenShift namespace or OpenShift project. And the other one is my APBs project. And it is also whitelisting any images that have a hyphen APB inside. And this, based on this broker configuration, if I add an image to either the OpenShift project or to the My APBs project, and if that image includes hyphen APB in its name, then such an image is treated as an APB service class and managed by the Ansible service broker. Ansible service broker itself runs as a pod and it is pulled based on an image from registry.access.redhat.com. 
It is based on OSE Ansible Service Broker image that is managed by Red Hat. As you add new images into the container registry, you would run APB bootstrap command as an administrator to tell the Ansible Service Broker to, hey, go and discover newly added uh, APB images to this container registry. And it uses the broker configuration whitelisting that we just saw to discover new APB images. Ansible Service Broker will now list them on the service catalog. We can see those as service classes in the catalog and use them. So how does a deployer use these APBs? From the client, which could be UI or CLI, you look at the service catalog and you can list the available APBs as service classes. Just now the OpenShift Ansible Service Broker manages this cluster service classes, which are pointing to the APBs. User picks a service from the service catalog in order to provision that. At this point, OpenShift Ansible Service Broker spins up a new temporary project on OpenShift. And within this project, it goes and pulls the APB container image from the container registry. And using that image, it spins up a pod with a container inside it. That container has Ansible runtime, and it also has all the playbooks that are pulled with that image. So in this temporary project, inside this temporary pod where there is Ansible runtime and the playbooks, it runs the provisioning playbook. And this provisioning playbook was written by the APB provider. So this provisioning playbook interacts with the service provider and spins up a new service instance. Now, once the service instance comes up, this temporary project will be deleted. If there was a problem with the provisioning process itself, then that temporary project and the pod will be left over so that you can uh, you can look at the logs and figure out what happened. Now, once the service instance is up, we can bind the service instance to your application and start using the service. This process is same as what we discussed before. Let us look at this with an example. I'm going to provision the same exact service that I provisioned in the past in the first video. So I'm picking up this my MySQL APB. This, I select the project in which I want to deploy this, give a name to the database, the username, password. I don't want to bind at this time. And let's go to the project overview. And at this point, it should create a temporary project where it is running this provisioning. The project that you are seeing now, this local registry my MySQL is the one, is that temporary project we were talking about. Let's look at the parts inside this. This is that ASB APB pod, which is still running. Let's look at the logs. And here are the logs from the provisioning process. So it logged onto Kubernetes, then it's switched over to the APB test project, and it is running the provisioning YAML file. It spins up a MySQL service, creates the volumes, and creates the deployment configuration, waits for the database pod to come up. So that's how the provisioning runs. You know, in my case, I changed the broker configuration to keep this namespace even after the provisioning is complete. Let's go back and check our project. And there is a running installs of MySQL now. I can now create a binding and add that secret to an application to use this service. But I'm not going to do that because we already seen that example in, in the first video. Now let's say we are done with this service and you want to deprovision it. At that point of time, your Ansible service broker will again create a temporary project. This time, instead of running a provisioning playbook inside that ABB board, it runs a deprovision playbook. The deprovision playbook will talk to the service provider and remove that running service. Once the service instance is removed, the temporary project will also be removed. So let's look at the deprovisioning process now. Click on the provision service and say delete here. You're confirming that it is deleted. Now let's go back and check the projects. This is the temporary project for deprovisioning and the pod inside this project. Let's look at the logs. The logs sh show all the deprovisioning steps. It removes the service, it removes the uh, deployment configuration and the persistent volume claim. While I did not show you how to install the APB tool and use it, I documented those steps. It, it's on my GitHub. I'm going to post this link on blog.openshift.com along with this video. The steps that I documented here could change in the future as some of the features here APB are being improved. To summarize in this video, we have learned the functioning of Ansible Service Broker, what APBs are, how these APB container images are stored in the container registry and picked up by the Ansible Service Broker, how the Ansible Service Broker spins up APB as a, a temporary pod and runs the provisioning and deprovisioning. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching.